Hello Year 9, welcome to Lesson 8 in Transport Across Membranes, all about root hair cells. You may have seen cells like this when you've seen a newly germinated seed, or you may even have seen like the little bits poking out on something like a carrot when you've eaten them at home. So, there are four objectives from this lesson. You need to know how the root hair cell is specialised for its function. You need to be able to explain how water is absorbed by osmosis, be able to explain how ions are taken up by active transport, and relate the specialised features you've learned about at the beginning to the functions. You should already have downloaded the worksheet from Padlet, and you will then be able, had a go at labelling the root hair cell diagram before watching the video. You can check your labels during the video and there's a table to complete as well while you're watching the main teaching lesson. Remember you can pause the video when you need to do this. So first of all, adaptations of a root hair cell. A root hair cell has got a long extension, a piece that pokes out. It looks like it's another cell, but it's not. It's the same cell, but extended. And this is the root hair part. This increases the surface area. The vacuole actually extends into the extension of the root hair. So it goes all the way through the main cell and into the root hair extension. There are also many mitochondria, which will provide energy because active energy requires an input. Active transport requires an energy input. There are no chloroplasts in these cells because they are below ground and chloroplasts perform photosynthesis in sunlight. Make sure your diagram is fully labelled now before you get the big reveal in a few seconds. One, two, three, go. Here are your labels. Did you get them all? You should have your largest organelle should be your nucleus. You've got a vacuole that goes here and extends all the way down almost to the tip of the cell. You have got the cell wall on the outside. The cell membrane is the inner layer and you have got cytoplasm inside the cell wall and the little dots here are the many mitochondria and these are called root epithelial cells the ordinary cells that surround it and the ones that poke out are the root hair cells so you can see the difference in shape now absorption of water occurs by osmosis we've already had a separate lesson about that several lessons about that you need to check them you can go back and do it the root hair has an extension which increases the surface area to volume ratio you've already had a whole lesson about that as well so you should be comfortable with what a surface area to volume ratio is and because the ratio is increased it's got a larger surface area relative to the volume of the cell that will increase the rate of osmosis because the, lar the larger the surface area, the more water can pass across it by the process of osmosis. It goes through the cell membrane and then into the vacuole, which is why the vacuole extends all the way into the root hair cell. And I already said the vacuole extends. This increases the surface area available in the vacuole as well. So that means that more water can move into the vacuole. The vacuole goes through knit to neighboring cell is very close to neighboring cells and the water moves from vacuole to vacuole through the plant and because it's const it's constantly being used elsewhere in the plant so water is constantly moving away from the root hair cell and that maintains the concentration gradient which means there is always more water outside the root hair cell than inside it so water is constantly taken up by the process of osmosis and because you've got the difference with the that's that present because of the concentration gradient it is a passive process and does not require any energy so you might have needed to pause the video at this point to make sure you're clear about this and to fill in the parts of the table that relate to osmosis Now, absorbing mineral ions is very similar. Different diagram again, get used to different formats for the same information. Again, you've got a root hair cell. Here you've got soil around the outside. It's got mineral ions as well as water. The mineral ions are in the soil. They can dissolve into the water. And you've got 
a trickier situation here because you have already got a higher concentration of mineral ions inside the plant cell, inside the root hair cell, than you have in the soil. There's only a few in the soil, but the plant needs lots to function. So that means you need to absorb them up the concentration gradient. So they won't just move through diffusion. Remember, dissolved ions can move through diffusion, but only if the concentration outside is higher than the concentration inside. In this case, that it is the opposite situation. So I've got a nice summary slide coming up now. And you can see all about active transport summarised here in case you need to revise that, although there is actually a separate lesson on this. Active transport involves the movement of ions in or out through a cell membrane. They go from an area where there's a lower concentration to an area where there's a higher concentration. So they are going up the concentration gradient and they need energy to do this and the energy will be released by respiration. You may wish to pause the video now to put the features of active transport into your table. Now we go back to another diagram of a root hair cell and we're going to think about how the adaptations within the root cell, hair cell are related to active transport in this case. Again, you've got a large surface area. This will aid active transport because there's more space for it to actually to occur. You also have an increased number of mitochondria. Remember, more mitochondria are the site of cellular respiration and they make energy available for active transport. They can make energy available for a variety of processes. There are also large numbers of mitochondria in some animal cells. You will have more mitochondria in muscle cells, which need the energy for them to function. And you will also have more mitochondria in sperm cells, which once again require extra energy. And that energy in both cases is provided through cellular respiration occurring in the mitochondria. A reminder from active transport, you have a membrane here and you have something called a pump and the protein molecules will bind to the ions and they'll move through the pump with the ATP, adenosine triphosphate being the chemical which provides the energy. For all of this to occur. There was a separate video for this in the active transport lesson if you need a reminder. Other places active transport can occur, again it can occur in animals as well as in plants, so it will happen in the small intestine of animals such as yourselves. You have villi, which are finger-like projections, very similar to the root hair extensions. They have an increased surface area to volume ratio. They also have many mitochondria and this allows them to take glucose up from digestion up a concentration gradient. There may well be a lot of glucose already in the blood, but the villi may, will absorb more by active transport in the similar way that root hair cells will absorb nitrite ions by active transport. Now the last thing for you to do, you've now finished the video, you should have labelled the diagram, you should have completed the table on your worksheet. You might also have wanted to copy out the diagram about active transport, that's up to you. There are a couple of exam style questions on the end of the sheet which you need to complete and submit on Teams. Thank you very much for your attention for Year 9, well done.